girl, real talk. This whole it's a new year, time to reinvent myself trash is not the vibe for 2024. You can find someone who loves you for you, as you are. You don't need to read a stack of self-help books, only eat sad salads, or like start meditating at 5 a.m. to be ready for dating. So yeah, my advice is to download Bumble and find someone who embraces you the way you are right now. Let me know how it goes. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2026. Is being friends with an ex possible? Listen to my father by Eddie Corbano of lovesagame.com. Hello, everybody, and thanks a lot for stopping in for a new week of ORD. I'm Greg Audino, your host and narrator, and today I'll be sharing a post for you courtesy of Eddie Corbano, a post on whether or not it is possible to be friends with an ex. It's well-rounded as it consists of both personal opinion and research, which I really like. So let's hear all about it as we optimize your life. Is being friends with an ex possible? Listen to my father, by Eddie Corbano of lovesagame.com. The following happened nearly 30 years ago in the heart of Europe. Me. I'm going out. My dad. Where are you going to? Me. I'm going to see Sandra. My dad. I thought you two were broken up. Me. We are. We just want to stay friends. My dad. What? Friends? When you break up, you're not supposed to see each other ever again. That's how it was, and that's how it always will be. This was a real conversation after one of my very first breakups, and I kept having it many times as I grew older. Why do we feel the need to be friends with an ex after a breakup? Is a platonic friendship between ex-romantic partners even possible? Why we want to stay friends There are many reasons why we usually try to. Here's the most popular one. We want to keep them close because the notion of losing them is unbearable for us. Broken up? We'll see about that. I'm sure they'll change their mind. We are hoping that they will finally come around, and we want to be able to influence the process. Staying friends is the most practical way to do that. Such behavior typically happens in one of the first phases of the breakup. What to do if you still have to deal with them? Additionally, if you also have kids together or work at the same place, it might seem like you are forced to stay friends. What are you supposed to do? Turn the cold shoulder when they come to see the kids? So why not make your life a little easier since you have to see each other anyway? Right? Wrong. Because staying friends, while it seems like the ethical thing to do, never works as long as one party suffers. You can't hope to stay friends if you're still emotionally involved in the relationship. They will treat you as a friend. They will tell you how their new life unfolds, and they won't spare you the details. They will test you and constantly check whether they still have power over you, playing stupid games that you will lose. And you will suffer more than you should, and you will prolong your recovery unnecessarily. Staying friends after a breakup does not work, at least not at the very beginning. That's what my failed relationships in the past have taught me, and this is what all of my clients experienced while being in the trenches. What does science say about being friends with an ex? On the other hand, scientific research suggests that the possibility of staying friends with an ex after a breakup or divorce depends on the amount of resources received once broken up. The Personal Relationships Journal says, quote, Results indicated that participants who received more resources reported higher levels of friendship quality with their former partner. Lack of family or friend support, involvement in a new romantic relationship, and the use of neglect as a disengagement strategy were all found to be barriers to friendship quality. End quote. Another study shows that if there was a friendship before the relationship, then a friendship has a good chance of survival after breaking up. The Journal of Social and Personal Relationships says, quote, Results indicated that being friends prior to romantic involvement was a significant predictor of friendship, both for the people who initiated the disengagement and for those who were recipients of their partner's desire for disengagement. End quote. It also seems that the quality of the relationship itself is an indicator of how likely a friendship after the dissolution of that relationship is. The Journal of Social Psychology says, quote, 
We found that the more satisfied individuals were during the dissolved romance, the more likely they were to remain friends, and the more likely they were to engage in friendship maintenance behaviors. End quote. Conclusion. So, what's the solution here? Staying friends or not? The solution to this dilemma is called following the no-contact rule. As you might already know, it's cutting off contact with your ex completely while you take time for yourself to heal for a predefined time period of 60 days. Why 60 days? Because this is enough time to reach a certain healing stage, after which your ex cannot sabotage your recovery anymore. You inform your ex about breaking off the contact. You don't disappear into thin air. No ghosting. This is the ethical way to do it. And if you still have to deal with your ex because of kids or the same workplace, you just follow a set of rules to protect yourself, which are called reduced no contact. And that's it. Not quite as my father said, not supposed to see each other ever again. Because at one point, you will want to see them again to make the final recovery test. No contact is the quickest way to healing after a breakup or divorce. It is simply a field-tested and proven fact, not just a theoretical concept. I know you think that you can't do it. Everybody thinks that. But you will be surprised what you can do if you focus on one goal, which is being emotionally independent. You just listened to the post titled, Is Being Friends with an Ex Possible? Listen to My Father by Eddie Corbano of lovesagame.com. Girl, real talk. This whole, it's a new year, time to reinvent myself trash is not the vibe for 2024. You can find someone who loves you for you, as you are. You don't need to read a stack of self-help books, only eat sad salads, or like start meditating at 5 a.m. to be ready for dating. So yeah, my advice is to download Bumble and find someone who embraces you the way you are right now. Let me know how it goes. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, flavorful meals to fuel you on jam-packed days. Well, our sponsor, Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you eat cleanly with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Save time, stay healthy, and treat yourself to high-quality, delicious meals over the holidays. Choose from over 35 chef-crafted meals every week that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. And by the way, Factor isn't just for dinner. Count on extra convenience any time of day with an assortment of over 55 add-ons to suit various preferences and tastes. Choose from quick breakfast items, lunch to go, grab and go snacks, and ready to drink cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. And rest assured, you're making a sustainable choice. Factor offsets 100% of their delivery emissions and source 100% renewable electricity for their production sites and offices. So head to factormeals.com slash optimal50 and use code optimal50, that's optimal50, to get 50% off. That's code optimal50 at factormeals.com slash optimal50 to get 50% off. And thank you so much to Eddie today for providing a thought-provoking perspective on those post-breakup relationships particularly the challenges of maintaining a friendship with an ex-partner. That is an area which he covers a lot, if this is your first time hearing his work. And I really like that he blends personal experiences with scientific research in this one. Um, I think he was very realistic when speaking about the emotional difficulties in such friendships, you know, the potential for prolonged pain and delayed healing, etc., This idea aligns really well with the research that the feasibility of a post-breakup friendship definitely depends on the quality of that previous romantic relationship and post-breakup interactions. Um, And therefore, it really shouldn't be painted with such broad strokes, even though Eddie says something about 60 days. I'm not really sure I agree with that. Tempting as it might be to do so, uh, given that we can develop very strong opinions about such painful experiences. So, Uh, I think it would also be worth examining how individual differences in personality and coping styles affect the ability to sustain a healthy friendship, too. Needless to say, while some may find comfort and closure in these friendships, others may very well experience ongoing distress. So, if you are in this situation, it is definitely worth considering your own individuality, how you heal, what this person meant to you, and any other 
psychological and or social implications. But with that, we are going to wrap things up for today, everybody. As always, I thank you so much for being here, starting your week with us, and making another episode possible. Have a great rest of your day, and be sure to tune in again tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.